<laughs> Sitting in her room through lightning and dark, a young girl carries a grown woman's burden. She sits in her room, rain and wind pounding on her window, sorrow and pain pounding at her heart. Tears burning her rosy cheeks, the realities of life destroying her beauty. The consequence of love has left its mark. There's a storm tonight outside her doors and a storm inside her mind. She clutches her midsection and chokes on her tears behind the eyes of a girl who wished to be a woman with sadness and fear. Ever in her wildest dreams, she envisioned this happening to her. You see, she was 15 and he was 19. Her emotions blazed out of control, passion and lust capped in her soul. She told him she was ready. She asked to visit a world she'd never been to. All of her morals and religious values flew out the window when she was gone. She began to lose herself in him. Sex was her drug, and at 15 years old, she was addicted. She was hooked on this careless love. After a while, there was no protection. He quit using the glove. Out of youthful ignorance, she smiled at this danger. She flirted with the consequence. He told her he loved the freedom, and she blindly agreed. See, she was weak intellectually, weaker spiritually, and that weakness is what has brought her to her knees. Oof. Tonight, the thunderstorm screams, mm -hmm. and in her thoughts, so does she. She cries, but not alone. Tonight, she cries with another. Tonight, there is baby and mother. Inside of her is a life. A 15-year-old confused on if this is wrong or right. She cries, but it cries harder. She screams, and it screams louder. She is weak, but it is weaker. Three months ago, she never thought this would be her. She flashes back to the afternoon they dipped in the backseat of the 68 Buick. In hot August night, she was jumping out of windows and climbing walls to see him. She remembers pushing him out the back door, pants around his ankle, shirt swinging around his neck on the days her mama came home early from work. She reminisces on the day she sat in church wondering when she'd see her boo again. She remembers and she regrets. In this little white chair she sits and she rocks herself through an ocean of tears. She cries for seven days, 16 hours and 13 minutes until she finally accepts that the growing baby inside her uterus is just as live as she is. No matter how many times she wishes or snaps her fingers, it is not going to dissolve or disappear without the abortion she cannot afford to have. So she must hold on for nine long months. She must allow her young belly to swell. She has no choice but to reveal her shameful secret to her family and friends, the ones that cried they loved her not three minutes ago have suddenly turned into red-eyed human creatures. What's left is to tell her lover. And as any fool who can ever be a father would, he runs with common response, it isn't mine. So this pregnant girl, with no friends, a disowned family, and apparently no baby daddy goes through with the birth anyways. And on February 28th, 1993, I am born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.